I'm Jeff Grossclose. Coming up, I will have a live report on what the North Dakota Highway Patrol will be doing this Easter weekend. And find out how police are using these goggles to stop teens from drinking and driving. You're watching NBC North Dakota News. This is the Evening Report. Good evening, I'm Chuck Bartholomew. And I'm Monica Hannon. Thanks for joining us tonight. With the Easter weekend upon us and the weather cooperating, it should make for a busy weekend of travel, which means a highway patrol will be out in full force. Jeff Grossclose is standing by live now to tell us what they'll be looking for. Jeff? Thanks a lot, Chuck. And yeah, you're exactly right. The highway patrol will be out in full force this weekend. And right now I'm joined by Sergeant Wade Pengley with the North Dakota Highway Patrol. And Wade, what are some of the concerns you have with traffic this weekend? Well, Jeff, with the increased traffic that we have out there right now, it's just an increased chance that people might have of having an accident down the roadway. Uh, we just would like to encourage people to be extra careful and increase their falling distance when they're going down the highway, turn on their headlights, and uh, look in the rearview mirrors every once in a while to make sure they're safe going down the highway. As far as major concerns you have of what you guys are watching, what are you looking for? We're always going to be looking for the drinking driver. Uh, encourage people to use the designated drivers as much as possible. I'd uh, like to encourage them to help us out, you know, dial star 2121 on a cellular phone if they think somebody's intoxicated on the roadway, and we'll hopefully get somebody out there to take a look at them. Okay, and it is pretty common for you guys to be out in full force. You're not extra staffed, as I understand, but you are out in full force on the holidays. That's pretty common, isn't it? Yes, we are. Everybody that's available will be out working the highways tonight as much as possible. Okay, and anything else you'd like to add? Best of luck to you, Chuck. Okay, you heard it here, Chuck. Best of luck to you. Back to you guys. Thank you very much. Monica? Of course, holiday weekends aren't the only time that drinking and driving is a problem, and too often the results are tragic. Next weekend, hundreds of high school students will get dressed up for their school proms. And for some students, alcohol is a big part of prom night. The Morton County Sheriff's Department is trying to change that with a series of workshops for high school students. As Jody Kurzman reports, they're doing that by showing students how alcohol can affect them. It's no secret that alcohol use is a growing problem among teens. Morton County Sergeant Jim Foley hopes these goggles will help curb that problem. It's an um, artificial means of showing kids how alcohol impairs both judgment and reflexes and reactions. The goggles, you can take them off and you're back to normal. With alcohol, you can't just do that. In his presentations, Foley has teens do a variety of field sobriety tests with and without the goggles. He says most students are surprised at how difficult simple tasks become when they put the goggles on. Simple tasks like walking in a straight line heel to toe. What I do is have you walk heel to toe, one foot in front of the other, just like this. <laughs> Not cool. <laughs> I can't. Okay. It was very hard. The line was like curved. In fact, it was so hard, Lindsay says, that she won't drink at all next weekend, which means this presentation was a success. In New Salem, Jody Kurzman, NBC, North Dakota News. Mandan High School students will get a chance to try out the Fatal Vision goggles at an assembly next week, and next Thursday night a special session is planned for parents and teens. That presentation is open to the public and will start at 7 Central Time at the Morton County Law Enforcement Center in Mandan. The 1998 murder of a former Rolla area resident may be solved. Authorities in Spokane, Washington now believe that Connie LaFontaine may have been the victim of a serial killer, Robert Yates. Yates was charged yesterday with one murder, but detectives there have evidence linking the father of five now to nine other murders in the Spokane area over the past several years. Detectives have de definitive evidence tying Robert Yates to the murder of nine victims one of which will not be charged in Spokane County because it is a Tacoma Police Department case. That is Melinda Mercer. Investigators are awaiting laboratory results in three more cases, which they believe will tie Yates to those homicides. As we said, one of those homicides is County LaFontaine, who was found in dead in 1998 with a gunshot wound to the head. Investigators expect to have laboratory results next week. Meanwhile, investigators continue to collect evidence outside of Yates' Spokane home. A former caseworker from Dakota Boys Ranch in Fargo has pleaded innocent to gross sexual imposition. Peter Wright is charged with molesting a 13-year-old girl who was staying at the home. He is currently out on bail. If convicted, Wright faces up to 20 years in prison and a $10,000 fine. Still ahead tonight, there was a long time coming, but a North Dakotan's Easter eggs are in display at the White House tonight. We'll show you them and explain the holdup. And to find out 
It's about a group that spreads warmth as the world over, and we mean that literally. Good evening, I'm Chief Meteorologist Kevin Lawrence. It's the end of the work week into the holiday weekend. Will the weather be as nice as it was today? Join me next. From NBC North Dakota News, you're watching the Evening Report at 5 with news anchors Chuck Bartholomew and Monica Hennon, Chief Meteorologist Kevin Lawrence, and sports with Lee Timmerman. This is the news leader, KQCD TV 7. Here in the middle of the screen, a couple of clouds and even some light rain shower activity in the Bismarck area, although most of which is not reaching the ground. And finally, this is Dickinson, this Dickinson Skywatch camera. We can see again, skies are partly cloudy and mainly on the dry side, making for a very pleasant evening, just some scattered early evening showers. Current weather situation right now, here's how things are shaping up. Partly sunny in Bismarck, again, a few sprinkles here and there. South wind at 10, pressure is falling 29.80 inches. Humidity way down there at 20%. Mobridge, mostly sunny. Dickinson, west wind at 15, gusting to 28. The windiest conditions right now are in the corridor from Dickinson to Minot over to Williston as a frontal boundary is moving through the area, producing some of those gusty winds. Meanwhile, though, most of the showers are east of Minot and Bismarck. Currently speaking right now, here's how things are shaping up. Not a bad day. The warmest day so far in 2000. Minot, 79 degrees, the warmest in North Dakota, although at the Air Force Base, it was in the lower 80s earlier on. Not bad in Bismarck, 76 degrees, Dickinson 77, 70s all throughout eastern Montana. Cool spot, Fargo, 69 degrees, Aberdeen as well, Sioux Falls at 66. So this go around, cool conditions are off to our east. Not a bad day whatsoever. Over at Lowe's for this morning, it was cool and temperatures were below freezing. In Bismarck, 29 degrees, also in Jamestown. Devil's Lake, though, 41 degrees, and Minot only 47. What a big difference between Bismarck and Minot. Meanwhile, uh, Williston, 40 degrees, and a pair of 39s checking in in Sydney and Glendive, Montana. Putting the satellite into motion, this is what's going on. Again, you can see the clouds forming here on the leading edge of a cool front. Really not doing much with respect to any uh, severe weather, by all means. Just a couple of light sprinkles, and that should be just about the extent of it during the remainder of the evening. Here's a look at the radar in motion here again from Minot over to uh, Bismarck down to around Lemon, South Dakota. Just some scattered showers. Not much to worry about, even in the Bismarck area, down through northwest South Dakota. Maybe a couple of sprinkles during the evening. Overnight lows, again, very mild, not as cool as it was this morning, mainly in the 40s all throughout the northern plains. And tomorrow itself, skies mostly sunny. Most of the energy this go-around still down across the central Rockies, really not affecting our weather all that much. Look at these high temperatures. A little cooler than it was for today, but still not bad in the 70s all throughout most of the viewing area. Certainly not bad. As for the second half of the weekend as well, temperatures will remain above normal for Easter Sunday. With that, most of the precipitation going well down to our south, Kansas and Missouri have the best chances for thunderstorms this go around. Here's how things are shaping up for tonight across the area. Scattered evening showers, mainly Bismarck over to Mobridge and points to the east as well. Otherwise, skies becoming mostly clear lows mainly in the 40s. For tomorrow, looking for highs in the 70s. A beautiful day, a little cooler than today, but certainly quite pleasant winds, 10 to 20 miles per hour. And for tomorrow night, overnight lows again in the 40s. Some scattered clouds moving in late, but it should be on the dry side. What about the next several days, including Easter Sunday? A high of 76 degrees, sky is sunny. Chance for some showers, maybe a thunderstorm by Tuesday. Highs by Monday, cooling into the 60s. When it gets to 75, Cliff takes the kids for ice cream. Oh, is that so? Yeah. so Maybe I you can take all of us for ice cream. I, I think tonight is the <laughs> night, honey, so... You better do it. It's almost 80 degrees out there. <laughs> Don't let it melt the car, though. <laughs> 17 years is a long time, and for those of you who haven't heard, Chuck Bartholomew is leaving us to take on new challenges elsewhere, and uh, we didn't want to let the last 17 years go by without having a look back. This is his final newscast here at KFYR-TV. So join us now as we look back a little bit over the last 17 years in Chuck's career. Hey Chuck, in spite of all the short jokes, as far as I'm concerned, you've always been tall in the saddle, and even though you've been anchoring our newscast, you've also been an anchor, a real anchor, for this newsroom for the past 17 years, and we're going to miss you. Good luck, Chuck. You know, when I started
started here 12 years ago, Chuck had black hair. I hope it's nothing I did. Chuck was always a gentleman in the office. And I recall the first thing that struck me about Chuck when I first met him when I went to work for KFYR was his exceedingly wide lapels. He had lapels about the size of Vermont, and I thought it was a bold fashion statement. And I admired him for it, frankly. Chuck, for 17 years, you've been the foundation of the best newsroom in North Dakota. We're going to miss you. What more can a news director say? Basically, that's the long and short of it, Chuck. It seems like he's been around forever. And on behalf of all the people of North Dakota, I want to thank Chuck for his service. I want to thank him for all his work, congratulate him for efforts well done, and wish him well in uh, his future plans. Short in stature, but tall in terms of integrity and character. You are a friend of mine and in many ways a mentor. I thank you very much for that. I would wish you luck over at Med Center One, but I don't think you're going to need it. And congratulations, Terry Brousseau. You're getting one of the best in Bismarck. Well, Chuck, you're going to be missed by everybody here, and it's certainly uh, my, myself, and I think everybody who worked here can say the same thing, so we're going to miss you. Thank well, you. I want to say to everybody from the staff here on the set, in the newsroom, all the reporters, all the way down Dick Height, thank you for taking a chance on me. Uh, I really appreciate it. 17 years is a long time. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, the control room, you're perfect in there. We appreciate all the hard work you do and all the people that have put up with me. I think we've all gotten a little gray because I've been around and the short jokes are all done with. <laughs> but another person I'd also like to thank is a personal friend that I've gotten to know over the last few years. And Lee, you're going to have to take me out. You're going to have to teach me how to fish yet. You should have went with us this morning. Yeah, I heard you, <laughs> you had a good one. I went for a beautiful walk this morning and I do appreciate it. But the viewers, number one in my heart, thank you very much for 17 years of allowing me to come in to visit with you each night at 6 and 10. That's been a great honor. I thank you for your calls, your letters. They're appreciated. All right. Well, good luck to you. I appreciate it. And we have just a little bit of news coming up, so we'll get to that in just a minute. Well, the Blades come back home for, what, second? Their second home game, yeah. Home Open game. at home, one on the road, then a bye week. Okay. Yeah, a fellow uh, by the name of Ron Estes does a weekly power rating listing every team in the IFL, and this week the Blades are 15th. Tomorrow's opponent, Flint, is 17th. Now, he also picks the Flames to beat Bismarck. Estes says Flint has better depth. Now the Blaze did beat Casper two weeks ago in their last outing and Colin Sanders talks about what made the difference in that win. We had some major improvement in special teams. Our kick coverage team was did an extremely good job uh, with one exception. Uh, Tyson came in, uh, Miesner came in and did a great job kicking the ball. So those are two areas that we had for, that we put emphasis on that we wanted to improve and we did improve in those areas. So I'm real happy about that. The head coach is also happy with his running game, and that starts with the big guys up front. But our linemen always have someone covering them, so we're not going up on linebackers too often. Now, we do play some games there in terms of when, when our blocking schemes change, we're up on the linebacker, but, uh, you know, our guys have to get on it right now. The Blazers are still looking for a number two quarterback behind Chris Schwab. 7.30 kickoff tomorrow at the Bismarck Civic Center. Now, Casper leads the division with the 2-1 and one record. The Blaze are tied with Billings at 1-1. One and one. The Machine from Black Hills is a game under 500, while the Freeze must have thawed in their first two outings. Well, earlier this week, North Dakota State's effort to join the Fighting Sioux in Division I hockey took a serious blow. The voters overwhelmingly rejected a sales tax extension to pay for the new arena. Dan Hammer of NBC North Dakota Sports talked with Bison Athletic Director Bob Ensign about what's next but we got our butt kicked and that uh, you know that's the reality and fargo voters spoke strongly there'll be no event center next to the fargo dome ndsu athletic director bob ensign says it's now time to form a coalition with those who turned down the proposal i just think first off if we're going to put something together we need to get the input of the, of the people that voted no and and i think that'll be big and i think from that uh uh, we sh we will we'll look at putting some together. And Ensign says despite the no vote, the vision of Division I hockey at NDSU is still alive. The window of opportunity is 
the next two or three years. And we need to come forward with something that the public is going to be excited about, and that that's, will be our goal. The proposal needed 60% of the vote. It did get 63%, but it was 63% no vote. Only 37% said yes. Well, the team that eliminated the Bismarck Bobcats is on the verge of heading home as well. Great Falls lost to Fernie last night 7-2 in the AWHL Championship, so the uh, Ghost Riders lead that best-of-seven series three games to none, game four tonight in Montana. Darren Ersted, well, he continues his assaults on Major League Pitching. The uh, North Dakota native picked up three more hits last night in Toronto. Ersted's average is the best in the majors at 492. That's 75 points higher than Frank Thomas in the American League and 38 points higher than the National League leader, Pokey Reese. Darren's 32 hits also leads the American League, and he's topped in the top five uh, with the on-base slugging doubles and stolen bases, Ersted and the Angels, so they play Tampa Bay tonight. One game is in the books in the uh, American League. Toronto beat the Yankees 8-3 to this afternoon. Well, it was a perfect day for golf, so you'd expect someone to hit the perfect golf shot. 14-year-old. Matthew Bockham of A of Steel aced number eight at the Cottonwood Golf Club. Matthew used a seven iron from 144 yards for his hole in one. Yeah, you don't win 59, 60 games in this league without being good, but you, we consider ourselves to be a good team too. So, um, and a, you know, playoff series never starts until both teams have been beaten. That's when that's when really the fun begins. That's well, the coach Flip Saunders talking about first round opponent Portland. They play on Sunday. 14 years old. 14 years old. You're not even gone, and I miss you already. Okay, appreciate it, Leif. We'll be back in just a moment. And all the financial markets were closed today because of the Easter holiday. That's it. That'll do it for tonight. No yeah. weather? Are we going to do Let's weather? Let's do weather real quick. Yeah. How about that? For tomorrow's uh, Saturday planner, Chuck, here you go. All for you. High 70, 75 degrees. Mostly sunny skies. Go out there and do some golfing. You deserve it. I right. uh, will. And again, thank you very much for 17 beautiful years, all of you people. It's been great. And keep in contact. And Carly and Adam and Kathy, I'm yours next Monday night at 6 for supper. <laughs> Don't be a stranger, Chuck. Yeah, Good evening.